The Wa to Christians Part 2 Fasting According to the Gospels, Jesus fasted for forty days. Matthew 4 2, And he fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterward he was hungry. See also Matthew 6 16 and 17 21, this was in accordance with the practice of the earlier prophets. Moses is also recorded in Exodus 34 28, to have fasted, and he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, he neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The purpose of fasting is clearly defined in Quran, O you who have faith in Allah and follow his prophet, Allah has ordered you to fast, as he ordered those before you. So that you may become mindful of Allah, protecting yourself from his punishment by doing good actions, fasting being one of the best of these, too. 183, as being for the development of God-consciousness. Only God knows who is actually fasting and who is not. Consequently, one who is fasting refrains from eating and drinking based on an awareness of God. Regular fasting heightens that awareness, which subsequently leads to a greater inclination towards righteousness. The believers are required to fast from dawn until dusk for the whole month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the lunar calendar. Prophet Muhammad, Shalalhu Alayhi Waisalam, also said, The best fast, outside of Ramadan, is that of my brother, Prophet, David who used to fast every other day. Sahih al-Bukhari, Vol.3, pages 113-4, No.200, and Sahih Muslim, Vol.2, P.565, No. 2595. Interest, Reba By upholding the law, Prophet Jesus also opposed the giving or taking of interest because the texts of the Torah expressly forbade interest. It is recorded in Deuteronomy 23. 19 That, you shall not lend upon interest to your brother, interest on money, interest upon victuals, food or provisions, interest on anything that is lent for interest. However, in the verse following this one, the Jews made lending on interest to non-Jews permissible. To a foreigner you may lend upon interest, but to your brother you shall not lend upon interest. Deuteronomy 23 20 Interest is also strictly forbidden in chapter Al-Baqarah, 2278 of the Quran. O you who have faith in Allah and follow his messenger, fear Allah by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions, and do not demand any usury owed to you that remains with people. If you truly have faith in Allah and in his prohibitions. In order to fulfill this divine requirement, Muslims developed an alternative system of banking, commonly known as Islamic banking, which is interest-free. Polygamy There is no record of Prophet Jesus opposing polygamy. If he did so, it would have meant that they condemned the practice of the prophets before him. There are a number of examples of polygamous marriages among the prophets recorded in the Torah. Prophet Abraham had two wives, according to Genesis 16:13. So after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her maid, and gave her to Abram her husband as a wife. So did Prophet David, according to the first book of Samuel 27. 3. And David dwelt with Achish at Gat, he and his men, every man with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel, and Abigail of Carmel, Nabal's widow. In 1 Kings 11 3, Solomon is said to have, had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, also had a number of wives, according to 2 Chronicles 11. 21. Rehoboam loved Maacah the daughter of Absalom above all his wives and concubines, he took 18 wives and 60 concubines, and had 28 sons and 60 daughters. Dot. In fact, the Torah even specified laws regarding the division of inheritance in polygamous circumstances. In Deuteronomy 21 15 16, the law states 15 If a man has two wives, the one loved and the other disliked, and they have borne him children, both the loved and the disliked, and if the firstborn son is hers that is disliked. 16 Then on the day when he assigns his possessions as an inheritance to his sons, he may not treat the son of the loved as the firstborn in preference to the son of the disliked. Who is the firstborn? The only restriction on polygamy was the ban on taking a wife's sister as a rival wife in Leviticus 18. 18. And you shall not take a woman as a rival wife to her sister. Uncovering her nakedness while her sister is yet alive. The Talmud advises a maximum of four wives as was the practice of Prophet Jacob, women in Judaism, p. 148. According to Father Eugene Hillman. Nowhere in the New Testament is there any explicit commandment that marriage should be monogamous or any explicit commandment forbidding polygamy. Polygamy reconsidered, p. 140. He further stressed the fact that the Church in Rome banned polygamy in order to conform to Greco-Roman culture which prescribed only one legal wife while tolerating concubinage and 
Prostitution, Ibid, p. 17. Islam limited polygamy to a maximum of four wives at one time and stipulated the maintenance of justice as a basic condition for polygamy Quran, 4 colon 3, God states. If you fear that you will not be just in marrying the female orphans under your guardianship, fearing that you will not give them an appropriate dowry or will not treat them well, then do not. Marry them, and marry other women you choose. You may marry two, three, or four. But if you fear that you will be unjust between them, then marry just one, or suffice with what you possess of slave women, for their rights are not the same as the rights of wives. This is the best way to avoid being unjust or biased. Christian Scriptures Authorship According to biblical scholars, even the authorship of the Old Testament books and the Gospels themselves is in doubt. Torah the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are traditionally attributed to Prophet Moses. Orthodox Jews claim that the Torah, the Jewish name for the first five books, was created 974 generations before the creation of the world. According to them, God dictated the Torah during the 40 days Moses was on Mount Sinai. In such a final and irrevocable form that it is sinful to claim that Moses wrote even one letter of it by himself, however. There are many verses within these books which indicate that Prophet Moses could not possibly have written everything in them. For example, Deuteronomy 34.5 to 8 states. 5 So Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, 6 And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab opposite Beth Peer. But no man knows the place of his burial to this day. 7 Moses was 120 years old when he died, his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abetted. 8 And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. It is quite obvious that someone else wrote these verses about Prophet Moses' death. In the appendix of the Revised Standard Version entitled, Books of the Bible, the following is written concerning the authorship of over one-third of the remaining books of the Old Testament. Book, Author Judges, Possibly Samuel Ruth, Perhaps Samuel 1 Samuel, Unknown 2 Samuel, unknown. 1 Kings, unknown. 2 Kings, unknown. 1 Chronicles, unknown. Esther, unknown. Job, unknown. Ecclesiastes, doubtful. Jonah, unknown. Malachi, nothing known. Apocrypha. More than half of the world's Christians are Roman Catholics. Their version of the Bible was published in 1582 from Jerome's Latin Vulgate, and reproduced at Douay in 1609. The Old Testament of the RCV, Roman Catholic Version, contains seven more books than the King James Version recognized by the Protestant world. The extra books are referred to as the Apocrypha, i.e., of doubtful authority, and were removed from the Bible in 1611 by Protestant Bible scholars. The Gospels Aramaic was the spoken language of the Jews of Palestine. Consequently, it is believed that Jesus and his disciples spoke and taught in Aramaic. Aramaic is a Semitic language which gradually supplanted Akkadian as the common tongue of the Near East in the 7th and 6th centuries BC. It later became the official language of the Persian Empire. Aramaic replaced Hebrew as the language of the Jews. Portions of the Old Testament books of Daniel and Ezra are written in Aramaic, as are the Babylonian and Jerusalem Talmuds. Its period of greatest influence extended from 300 BC until 650 CE, after which it was gradually supplanted by Arabic. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 1, p. 516 The earliest oral tradition of Jesus' deeds and sayings undoubtedly circulated in Aramaic. However, the four Gospels were written in an entirely different speech, Common Greek, the spoken language of the civilized Mediterranean world, to serve the majority of the Church which was becoming Hellenistic, Greek-speaking, instead of Palestinian. Traces of Aramaic survive in the Greek Gospels. For example, in Mark 5 41, taking her by the hand he said to her, Talitha see you me, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise, and Mark 15 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Encyclopedia Americana, Vol. 3, p. 654. The New Testament Gospel of Mark, though considered by church scholars to be the oldest of the Gospels, was not written by a disciple of Jesus. 
Biblical scholars concluded, based on the evidence contained in the Gospel, that Mark himself was not a disciple of Jesus. Furthermore, according to them, it is not even certain who Mark really was. The ancient Christian author, Eusebius, 325 CE, reported that another ancient author, Papias, 130 CE, was the first to attribute the Gospel to John Mark, a companion of Paul, the Five Gospels. P. 20, and the New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 824. For references to various marks in the New Testament, see the following, Acts 12:12, 12, 12, 25, 13, 5, 15, 36-41, Colossians 4, 10, 2 Timothy 4, 11, Philemon 24. And 1 Peter 5, 13, others suggested that he may have been the scribe of Peter and yet others hold that he was probably someone else. The same is the case with the other Gospels. Although Matthew, Luke and John are the names of disciples of Jesus, the authors of the Gospels bearing their names were not those famous disciples. But other individuals who used the disciples' names to give their accounts credibility. In fact, all the Gospels originally circulated anonymously. Authoritative names were later assigned to them by unknown figures in the early church, the five Gospels, p. 20. Books, Authors Gospel of Mathov, Unknown Although there is a Matthew named among the various lists of Jesus' disciples, the writer of Matthew is probably anonymous. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 826. Gospel of Mark, Unknown Though the author of Mark is probably unknown. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 824. Gospel of Luke, Unknown the Muratorian canon refers to Luke, the physician, Paul's companion, Irenaeus depicts Luke as a follower of Paul's gospel. Eusebius has Luke as an Antichine physician who was with Paul in order to give the gospel apostolic authority. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 827. Gospel of John, Unknown From internal evidence the gospel was written by a beloved disciple whose name is unknown. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 828. Acts, the author of Luke. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 14, p. 830. I, 2, 3 John, the author of Joh and 3 9. Ibid, Vol. 14, p. 844. J. B. Phillips, a prebendary, a priest who receives income from the revenue of a church, especially a cathedral. Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, p. 973 of the Chichester Cathedral, the Anglican Church of England, wrote the following preface for his translation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Early tradition ascribed this Gospel to the Apostle Matthew, but scholars nowadays almost all reject this view. The author, whom we can conveniently call Matthew, has plainly drawn on the mysterious Q, comma, there are about 200 identical verses found in both Matthew and Luke, e.g. Matt 3, 7-10 and Luke 3, 7-9. Matt 18, 10-14 and Luke 15, 3-7. With no equivalent in either Mark or John. As a way of explaining this striking agreement, a German scholar hypothesized that there once existed a source document, which he referred to as a Kell, German for a source. The abbreviation Q was later adopted as its name. The existence of Q was once challenged by some scholars on the grounds that a saying's gospel was not really a gospel. The challengers argued that there were no ancient parallels to a gospel containing only sayings and parables and lacking stories about Jesus, especially the story about his trial and death. The discovery of the Gospel of Thomas changed all that. The Five Gospels, p. 12 Thomas contains 114 sayings and parables ascribed to Jesus, it has no narrative framework, no account of Jesus' exorcisms, healings, trial, death, and resurrection. No birth or childhood stories, and no narrated account of his public ministry in Galilee and Judea. The Coptic translation of this document, written about 350 CE, found in 1945 at Nag Hammadi in Egypt, has enabled scholars to identify three Greek fragments, dated around 200 CE discovered earlier, as pieces of three different copies of the same Gospel. Thomas has 47 parallels to Mark, 40 parallels to Q, 17 to Matthew, 4 to Luke, and 5 to John. About 65 sayings or parts of sayings are unique to Thomas. The Five Gospels, p.15, which may have been a collection of oral traditions. He has used Mark's Gospel freely, though he has rearranged the order of events and has in several instances used different words for what is plainly the same story. The Gospels in Modern English 
The fourth gospel, John, was opposed as heretical in the early church, and it knows none of the stories associated with John, son of Zebedee, since the late 18th century. The first three gospels have been called the synoptic gospels, because the texts, set side by side, show a similar treatment of the life and death of Jesus Christ. The New Encyclopedia Britannica, Vol. 5, p. 379, in the judgment of many scholars, it was produced by a school of disciples. Probably in Syria in the last decade of the first century, the five Gospels, p. 20.